Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome to season two, the making of the shop. So what we are going to do in this season is talk about, you know, the progress of what it's like to make a sneaker shop. So I hope you guys are ready for this journey. It's going to be a little bit different than the day in the life. It's still like a vlog, but I hope to kind of inspire some of you guys who want to open up a shop and maybe give you guys some insight on the backgrounds and the details and all that stuff. Or maybe you just want to make a cool space, or maybe you want to do pop-ups. Maybe Maybe you want to work out of a random storage unit. I don't know what you guys want to do with your reselling life, but I'm here just to take you along my journey. So a couple of things that are similar to what we're used to is that we do have a couple pairs going out. Now this is going to be something a little bit different because, you know, all these sales are going to start slowing down because I'm waiting and trying to save up stuff for the store. So when I open, it looks nice and full. So some of the things that did sell though over the weekend is a pair of PSG4s in a size six and a half Y. I got these off two kicks for 205 bucks and I sold them on eBay for 300 bucks. So I'm going to be making about like 80 bucks on this pair, which is not bad at all. And then we also have a pair of these Sakai's going out. So I bought these off of, I think it was, his name was Samir Souls. He sold these to me for 375 when they first came out because he gave me a deal too. Cause no lie, they were going for about 400 on StockX at the time. So he gave me a $25 discount from lowest ask. And I sold them a few weeks later, maybe a few months later, maybe it was about two months I held them and I sold them for $575 shipped. So I made about $200 off of that deal, which is amazing and good pro like making 200 bucks off of an investment for two months. That's super solid guys. And then we also sold a pair of bread 350 Yeezys. So these are a size nine and a half dead stock. Bought these off my friend Brandon uh, for 320 and we're pretty much selling them for 385 shipped. So I'm making about 60 bucks from that one because it's gonna cost me five bucks to ship it. This is also part of a clothing rack that I am building. I am looking into how to build this stuff. So uh, if you guys are interested in that, I'll show you guys what the finished product looks like and what we're gonna aim for. Yeah, guys, it's it's happening. It's crazy. It's it's a new wild ride that we're we're going on. So. back in Goodwill and we saw a pair of these Jordan 2s in a 10 and a half. Does anyone even like Jordan 2s anymore? But look at this tongue though. Not even attached. But let's see if we can find any clothes. All right y'all see MGR real estate. Got my papers right here. Everything in here is the lease that I just signed. So all the paperwork, I just left the meeting with them, signed the papers, getting in my car. And yeah, man, I I just signed the lease for the store for a year. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> like, oh, I can't believe I'm gonna own a store. It's honestly like a super, like, mixed emotion feeling like i'm super excited i'm super stoked like this has been like a goal or a dream of mine that i used to daydream about um but it's also like just super scary like my life is gonna change my hour like the things i do on a daily basis change like like everything's about to change and i guess that's the scary part is that you know when you're stepping into a, a new area of change it it, it just scares you because you don't know what to expect you don't know what it's going to be like you don't know if it's going to you know, be everything that you, you wished it was, or 
or is it going to be like the total opposite of everything that could go wrong will go wrong type of stuff and you know it's it's hard to to really kind of go base off of that like but the one thing that i will tell you guys and the one thing that i know is that i mean not to get all religious on you but my belief is that you know god has walked me through uh this journey and he's provided and you know gave me insights surrounding me with the right people to get to this point and i know that if um if this is you know the space i'm walking into i know he's walking through it with me so uh, that's my confidence that's what i'm confident in um and you know it's just an awesome feeling it's an awesome time and like it's, it's just crazy man so i just wanted to share this moment with you record it and kind of bring you guys along with the journey like i i just signed i just signed the lease for my place all the paperwork like there's my initials right there bro so got it signed should be ready by the weekend and then hopefully we're already going to be you know building furniture for it so so just a few little tiny things that are going out one of the things that's sold is a pair of these yeezys so these are the carbons and i i sold these i'm getting about 300 dollars out of them which is what i estimated them to sell for surprisingly these sold really quick so i sold these on StockX. i think i'm getting about i think 350 dollars. this is a dead stock pair of royals from 2013 not the most recent one so we got some packages which honestly you guys are probably gonna see me open up a bunch of packages this episode hopefully you guys enjoy that but really quick here is um like one of the clothing racks so as you see they're made out of like metal piping and then the legs are also metal everything's metal so this is decently long i guess so I think it looks pretty decent. Nothing too crazy. Nothing going on that's like too complicated. I mean, I would have I like. There's a lot of ways to make this, but this was like the simplest way that also looked kind of cool. So one of the first ones being a red fear of God hat in one seven and a quarter. So honestly, these are going for retail, which is sixty five bucks after tax. It's about seventy five bucks. So it's not really like I'm making anything, but I think that it'll be cool to have these in the store. Just another piece of merchandise for people to buy. I probably sell them at the store for about a hundred bucks flat, just because I feel like that's honestly not bad. Cause if you buy them off of StockX, it'll be about a hundred bucks. Plus you have to wait two weeks to ship it. Uh, and then we do have a GUA deal. I believe these are a pair of Jordan fours. And I don't, I think this is a replacement box. This is a pair of the Jordan 4s in the Legend Blue or Columbia colorway. Everyone says it differently. Uh, technically, it's Legend Blue on the box label, but these aren't too bad. I bought them for 100 bucks shipped, so I think that's a pretty good deal. There's nothing really wrong. They just need a little cleanup. Like, that's dirt, I think, that I can clean up. So... I think I can sell these for about like 140 to 160 ish just because it is a replacement box. So that's honestly not too bad. We also got this book from Nike. So the off white book, it's still wrapped in the plastic. I'm pretty sure these are probably going for about retail, but I don't know if I want to keep it, display it, or have it displayed at the store for people to look at. I also don't like the idea of a bunch of people touching it because then it just gets super dirty. And then we also have another GUA deal right here. So we do have a pair of size seven Jordan four colorway is black. Instagram handle Nathan Cho Jordan four black cat agreed price 240. Thanks for buying. Thank you for the note. Just in case I need to, just in case I forget. Sometimes that happens and I am searching through my Instagram feed, but it's cool that he has his own little thing little business card so right here we do have a size 7y in these and for you guys who don't know i think these are hidden like 400 on StockX right now for a ds pair and i mean these are worn obviously so i bought them for 240 i think i can sell them for about 3 320 just because you know everybody wants these right now and they're not in bad condition so we agreed to 240 on these but let me know if you guys think i overpaid for this i'm not sure last thing we do have is one more gua deal right here 
Uh, low key, the only thing that I'm upset about, upset about is how big this box is. It's a huge box for only three pairs of shoes, but it does look like they packaged it decently well. Oh, well, a lot, a lot nicer. I guess I can't complain about the box, but we do have, like you said, a size eight. I think this is the other size eight. And then, oh, size 14, upside down 14. All right, y'all, so we got more packages to unbox. It is Thursday, and so just to keep you guys updated, uh, I'm waiting for them to put new flooring into the shop. That's why we're not in the shop yet. So we're waiting to get the keys and everything. So hopefully I can get them tomorrow. Probably gonna be more in the late evening, if anything. And so hopefully by Saturday, we can go in there and start working on the shop. But we do have a few, two, two main packages uh, to open up. And so this first one I want to talk about a little bit. So this one comes from Grail Caviar. So Grail Caviar is a, they're like, you guys have seen me buy stuff from Two Kicks because Two Kicks is a membership based company uh, that where you, you know, you pay like a monthly fee and then you get, you get access to shoes for a cheaper price, pretty much. So this is exactly the same thing. Grail Caviar, they do the same thing, except their drops are a little bit different. You know, a chance for a drop that comes on Sundays. And then if you are able to cop, then you're able to cop and get a steal. You got to be fast enough. You got to be quick enough because all the other members are trying to get all the shoes that they can. So this weekend I gave it a try and this is what we got. So packaging seems pretty decent. So I bought a pair of Yeezys that were pre-owned. I bought a pair of Yeezys that were pre-owned. As you can see, there are some scuffs or like some scratches over there and just some creases. But overall, they're not too bad. I mean, I think my personal opinion, like, I mean, I got these for a good deal anyways. These were $175 plus I think I paid like, tax and shipping on it so i probably paid up to like 190 for them uh but i mean these shoes are probably going to go for like 250 because they're in good condition i do have to clean up like the insoles are a little dirtier than i thought um and i didn't know about these kind of scratches right here which hopefully i might be able to get those out because uh, i could get the creases out so i'm hoping these are kind of creases or i'm not sure but they came packaged well and this is the business card right here so grill caviar a dash of rarity in a world of hype so that's pretty much what it is um so they do a lot of dead stock stuff though i just copped like one of the few worn pairs just because uh i, I was new to it so i had to kind of just learn to adjust so now i know i'm going to be ready for uh, their, their next drop i know what i'm going to go for it's good to have a game plan ahead of time so that you know what to cop but if you guys are interested uh, that's something that I'm probably going to start using. I have to see how the next drop goes. So that's all for that one. And then we had one more. It came in this big old box right there. I took it all out and I want to, I want to know what you guys think about this deal. I paid, how much did I pay? I paid eight ninety for all five pairs. All right. So the first pair is a pair of volts in a grade school size. So that's probably about 180 bucks, I think. I mean, like I said, grade school pairs, I think they're going to go up. And then we have a size eight and a half in the Jordan 1 gold patent leather metallic gold. I don't know. This, the name for these is kind of weird. But anyways, uh, we got these. I think these are probably going not for too much, maybe like a little over 200. And then we bought a pair of bricks, a pair of golden mids, which honestly, they're kind of cool, but... We'll see if they do anything. I think I paid a hundred, but I think they go for like a little over retail, which is like 130 or something like that. And then we have a size nine in the bum bum bum, Jordan four fire red colorway. Uh, these are all dead stock shoes, by the way. So these are probably going to be going for about 300 now. They're about like 280, 300 ish. So definitely not bad and then the last pair right here 
is a desk stock pair of Jordan 13 flints. So this is also a size eight and a half, all dead stock, paid $8.90 for all five, which I think I got a pretty good deal. Um, and But I also think I gave him a pretty good payout for it. So I sold a pair of these Jordans right here. We did sell this pair, which is a Jordan 5 black metallic. And this, I think I paid like 180 for it or something like that, or maybe even less than that. But I sold them for 265 shipped, so I should be making a pretty good profit on these. No box, but they're not in terrible condition, so. All right, so one thing, because I like to teach you guys some things, uh, one thing that uh, you might not have known is you can get rid of creases in some shoes that have very thick foam midsoles. So, for example, I bought these Yeezys. You can see the difference between them. So this, the one on the left, I treated. So, I mean, I couldn't get that thing out. I'm gonna try something else, but look at the crease difference. They were both creased about the same, but I got the creases out of this left pair. So I'm gonna show you guys just how to do that. This is how you do it, all right? What you're gonna need is one of these guys. It is a heat gun. So these things just pretty much blow out hot, hot air. But you just wanna be careful when you're doing it because you don't wanna put it too close. If you do it too close or if you leave it there for one spot, it could burn the material. So that's just something you wanna be careful about. And also you might wanna cover the uppers if you can, just in case, because if you do touch the, the suede or knit or whatever, it can burn that material too. So just be careful, but this is kind of what it might look like a little bit. I'm just gonna pretend because I don't wanna burn the box, but literally I would just go like this back and forth, but I would hold it in the air not against this box because if I start aiming at the box, it could burn the box. So I literally would just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, taking the air off just so it doesn't overheat or burn. And I'm not going to be aiming at this. So I actually put a little nozzle right here that kind of makes it smaller or like more of a targeted area. So you might need that too. So these are cheap. I think I bought it for like 20 bucks on Amazon. Yo, I know this setup looks like most most of my mystery box fridays but i'm just opening up packages now so we did just film a bunch of the mystery box friday stuff and but i wanted to open this package for you guys because this is store related and for the vlog this is part of the store so i did get a package because the store will be indeed selling very interesting of a package lewis but in this shopping bag, we do have a couple pieces of cool stuff. So right here, we do have a vintage champion Weber Warriors jersey, size 40, which is like a size medium. So we're gonna have this at the store. We also bought a vintage Shaq, Mr. O'Neal USA champion jersey. So this is a size 48, which is technically an extra large and we bought more which is a grant hill uh the pistons jersey so this is another vintage champion also a size 48 so that's pretty cool too um and the last thing we bought from my friend is a vintage t-shirt which is the mighty ducks an all like pretty much a big graphic uh, so you have the duck ripping out of the shirts with the mighty on the front and then on the back, you do have it saying uh, ducks and him ripping through it from there. So it's kind of cool. Uh, definitely a better piece to have. And, you know, we live close to the Anaheim Stadium or I don't know if it's called a stadium or not. So this is pretty cool to have and I think a good piece to sell. So uh, he gave me a deal because he knew I was opening up a shop. This is a size XL. These are all going to be available for the grand opening. So we have more vintage coming. Write down in the comments down below, are you a fan of vintage or is it kind of like whatever to you? Because I do love vintage because it's also my childhood. So where are we going? We are on our way to finally pick up the keys for the place. So they were redoing the floors because we wanted them to do wood floors instead of having the carpet that was put in. So they just sent me a picture saying it's all done. 
and I just need to go grab the keys and then we finally have access to the shop, which is crazy. Yeah, so right after this, uh, we'll show you guys what they did and then we'll pull. That's it. Yeah, that's it. We got the Thunder Key. Uh, so it's technically not our first time in there, but it's our first time in there, like actually having the lease. Oh. So I'll open up. Oh, there you go. Can't see anything. All right. So this is going to be the home of Holy Ground and I know it's not like a mall space or a super fat space, but that's not what we're aiming for. Like this is a nice little um, shop and that's kind of what I felt like I wanted to go for. I didn't want to have something big and extravagant like how you see most people have them, but sometimes you gotta start with humble beginnings and honestly, like this is a big step for me and I'm super excited to be here. So they just finished the floors, which I think is perfect. I think it's honestly, the great vibe that we have. Um, that wall, that stuff is not gonna be there. That was from the previous tenant. And so we gotta take that off, but uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. And I hope to see you guys in here, but we're gonna kind of show you uh, the difference with also the before and after, maybe a little bit of the process of what's going on, just so you guys could see, have the background information. But when it's all said and done, I kind of want to keep it a little bit of a secret so that way we can kind of do like a reveal and when we do our grand opening and all that stuff. So uh, just want to share this little piece with you and we're going to go ahead and see what's going to happen next. All right, y'all. So this is the back. Uh, so. I, honestly, I do wish we could use this space for the store as well, but it's just the way that they made it. Uh, so this is kind of gonna be where we keep all of our inventory, put our racks, do like our um, other stuff, like taking photos of shoes in our photo box, having, you know, just anything that's considered work that's not for the showroom. Like that's what I'm calling it the showroom because that's what you guys will see. So uh, we have that. And then also our own private bathroom, which <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not gonna be available for customers. We actually have bathrooms right on the side of our location. So this is private only for workers and family. So, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and then these also have some built-in shelves also. So that's cool that we have this extra space if we need it to. Try to head to the good old Home Depot. All right, so now we're gonna go uh, it's early in the morning Saturday. We're trying to get some supplies to start building shelving. And so let's get to work. So you just the one right All right, so we finished painting this whole wall white. I put a lock on our inventory room door. Uh, let's see what else we got. And then we mounted a TV up here, just a small one, just in case we get bored or in case we want to show you guys some stuff. Yeah. And then and lastly, uh, my wife and her mom, my, my mother-in-law, they stained all of the wood. So these are going to be our shelving for the white wall. And then, so we got to put that up, up on this wall right here. And it's going to go all the way across. <laughs> and then last time I saw you, you had a different car. I know, bro. Bro, they freaking crashed me. Oh, really? Yeah, so I got totaled. So oh, God. I don't have a car right now. Damn. I'm trying to sell these to buy a new one, you know? A little cheap one. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for selling to me other than me. Oh, yeah. He wanted to, he was going to pick them up at night, but I was like, I was kind of sketched out. I was like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't like doing deals at night. Unless if I know the person. Yeah, yeah. That's why, that's why I was like, you know what? Nah. That's why I asked you. <laughs> Where did you get these ones from? Oh, Nike? This one was correctly Nike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty sweet. 
I had a guy who was like, oh, your pairs must be fake because they're like yellowing in the back. Yeah. I was like, they're all yellowing. From that? From people? Yeah. Uh, he looked at me and was like, oh, they must be fake. I was like, oh, <laughs> To me, that should look sick. Yellow? Like, it's like bluish, yellow. I don't know. Yeah, but just had them sitting in the bar. Like, sure. I didn't want to wear them because they were white. <laughs> so I was like, no, I just keep them in there. Yeah. Try to sell them. Try to sell them. <laughs> yeah, I'll just like cover part of that, but yeah, 640 right there. Gotcha. Alright y'all, so what y'all just saw, I bought uh, three pairs of shoes, a brand new pair of Fire Red 4s, uh, I think I paid about 240 for them, a brand new pair of Fragment 3s, which I think I paid about 300 and then a pair of uh, DMP6s that were used, and I paid about 100 110 on them. So in total, I sent him about 640 I'm not sure if I'm doing my math right, but we do have three packages over here. So let's do this one first, which is a box from Two Kicks. So, unfortunately, their services are coming more to a stop, but we did buy a brand new pair, size 8 Jordan 1, in the pine green colorway. So, I believe these, I forgot what the profit margin was. I think it was like 40 bucks under market value. All right, next package right here is a pair of... Uh, it was actually a GUA deal, so someone hit me up on Instagram. I think we did two pairs of shoes for 340 or 370. The first one being a size 4Y in the Volt colorway, which people are saying like, you know, these aren't going to do so well. Like people don't have faith in these. Honestly, uh, I I understand, but I still think at least in grade school pairs like. Being for under $200 for a Jordan 1, like these are, these have to at least hit 250 in, in both grade school and men's sizes. Like I think at a minimum, 250. And then the last pair, that was a dead stock pair, but then the last pair in here is one I have to inspect a little bit more, but it is a replacement box Jordan 1. And we have a pair of the Royal Jordan 1s, all right? The only thing that sucks about this is the the leather on this mid panel is hideous. Like it's so ugly. So hopefully we can try and fix that or do something about it. These aren't too bad. Just need a clean and a little touch up with some paint and these should be good to go. So I think I bought them off of him for about, did I do 230 or 220? I think it was like 220 and like 150. That's why it says 370. So something like that. But I mean, you know, getting these for that price, it's it's a good deal. You could definitely make some money on these. And it's gonna be a good addition to the shop. And then we have one more big package. For you guys who don't know a little bit more about like a little bit more about like my past and my history. Like, so I've been doing sneakers for eight years, but I also got into vintage and thrifting, like right around the time round two came in. Not gonna lie, like they are the ones who kind of put me in the mindset of vintage. Like I never knew about that. It was more about new clothing. But when I was like, yo, this is stuff from like my childhood. Like I'm a 90s kid. Finding stuff from the 90s, just I thought it was super sick. Um, and it's also unique, like very unique shirts. Very like, you don't really see people wearing them. Like that was a big pet peeve of mine when I was like in high school was wearing a shirt and I didn't want anyone else wearing that shirt. So vintage is, something that really spoke to me and I really appreciated it. So I definitely want to have vintage in my shop. So we're not just sneakers, we're vintage, we're, you know, Supreme, Babe, Fear of God. I was looking for a bulk deal because finding vintage uh, before opening the, up the shop is just gonna take a lot of time. So I, that's why I've kind of been going to thrift stores here and there, not really like searching hardcore for it, but I was on a Facebook group 
this guy reached out to me, but he has a store and his Instagram name is past to present SJ. Maybe you guys have heard of him if you are into vintage, but the dude hooked it up. So I was like, yo, my budget is, I want to spend a thousand dollars. I want to have shirts that I could sell for like, you know, 30 to like 60 bucks. I don't want to sell like hundred, $150 t-shirts just because I think in my area, people aren't willing to spend that much. He's like, yo, I got you, I'm gonna hook you up. And I think he said like everything he was gonna send me was probably worth like 2000 something like $500, which is insane. Like that's a huge profit margin. So uh, he definitely looked out and he added some more goodies in here. So if you're, I don't know if you're watching this or anything, but thank you so much for hooking it up. But a few things that we do have in here is a Newport Pleasure little lunch pail. That's what it looks like, which is interesting. Yes, past to present vintage, super sick. It's a sticker. Smoking Joe's, it's a racing NASCAR type of thing, which is also just like a tin box. No problemo, Bart Simpson, little mini lunch box. Uh, this one's pretty cool. The Mummy Returns t-shirt, this one's a little bit smaller. Yes, if you guys remember, Home Improvement. Caution, man with tool, vintage um, bicycle t-shirts. 2000s, Nike, swoosh, and then on the back, it says just do it. This is like a very plain basic shirt, but I just thought it was cool because of the double-sided graphic. Oh, this is a sick one, especially right now because of, uh, because of Cobra Kai and all that stuff, like the next Karate Kid, that's a cool t-shirt. Got a Nike windbreaker jacket from the 90s, size large. It's got the little Nike bottom right there. So so it's a Looney Tunes jacket, but with it on the, the patch on the back is huge. And so in the front, you still have this patch. So they, this was a super sick jacket. Uh, Adidas jacket right here, another 80s, I think. Hopefully you guys can see the vision of what I want the shop to be. So I was selling an Essentials pair of sweatpants to this guy for 140. And then he came up, I told him that I'm having a shop. He's like, oh, yo, I'm trying to get rid of this. So this is a Kanye West Presents Jesus is King. This is from like, uh, I think one of his Sunday service shows. And so he sold me this. He said it's brand new, even though there's cracking. He said like even the new ones have cracking. I still need to look that up. He seemed like a very authentic guy. And then he also sold me these top, taupe top, I don't know, uh, essential nylon track pants. So we have these, they're going for about 135. And uh, he gave me this one and this one for 180 for both. And we saw that there was people selling this Kanye West one for like, I don't know, 220 on Grailed or something like that. I'm not gonna sell it for 220 even if it was brand new or even if it's going for 220, but the guy gave me a deal for 180. Uh, honestly, I'll probably end up selling the Kanye West uh, shirt for, I'm guessing about 150, and then the sweatpants will probably be another 150. Um, and then the Kanye West shirt, I'm pretty sure if it goes for 220, someone could come in here, buy it for 150, make a little flip on it. But uh, if people give me deals, I wanna give other people deals. You know, I still need to make money on it, but I'm just, you know, that's just what it is. But all that being said, we got a lot of work to do in here. We got a lot of people to make phone calls with and all that stuff. So uh, I'm just gonna get to work and we'll catch you guys up. All right, y'all, so we sold a few pairs of shoes. Uh, one of the first pairs we are sending out is a pair of these University Blue, I always wanna call these Cool Gray, uh, Jordan 12s. So I bought these for 70 bucks. I sold them for 125 shipped. I'm getting 120 back. So I'm making about 50 bucks on that pair, which is great. That's exactly what I wanted. And then I did sell uh, this pair of infrared Air Max 90s once again. So hopefully there's no return on this one. I took photos of the creases on here that the other person did not like. So hopefully this buyer will um, like them and I can get these out of my life. Once I get a shoe return, like I just don't want that shoe anymore. It just brings bad memories and headaches and stuff. Um, we did sell the Green Bean uh, Jordan 5. I've had these up for forever. This one had like, I feel like almost a hundred watchers and it's definitely broken 10,000 views on eBay, which is insane. They've just been sitting here for like forever. So uh, hopefully whoever buys these also doesn't return them because that's another shoe I'm glad to have out. I sold them for a hundred bucks shipped and I got them in a mystery box. And so whatever mystery box that is, is profitable already. 
Uh, I also sold these Jordan 5 University or Fire Red 5s from the Countdown pack. So these sold on eBay also. I think I sold them for, I don't know if it was 125 or 145 or some some kind of price like that, but I got these for 70 bucks also. So I'm making about 50 to 60 bucks, I think. And then I, uh, and then this is a shoe I sold on StockX. So I sold the Supreme shoe. So I got this in a mystery box that you guys saw earlier. And uh, these sold and I got, I think I'm getting about like 180 for these. But then I didn't film yesterday that I sold the cream pair on StockX also. So I already shipped that out. And I got, I think like 200 and something dollars for the cream pair. So that's good. Selling two pairs of this is really good because I was worried about it. So these have been moving decently well for me. And then the other thing I didn't show is, I'm so sad, but I sold the Fear of God sweatpants. The gray ones, I got that in a Hypebeast mystery box from Soul Steals. And somebody paid like $800 for that pair of sweatpants. I mean, I cleared like 680 or something like that, but my lowest, my ask was like $772 or something, something crazy like that. So it's, I'm surprised whoever bought that is rich and I hope that they enjoy those sweatpants, but I'm enjoying the money I'm making off of that deal. So, all right, y'all, got some boxes. We got my lovely wife and our friend Matt, who's helping us. Look at all this. How does it feel to work hard? Something you'll never know. Oh, a little early morning thrifting. Um, so I'll show you guys what I get after. All right, y'all. So we did get uh, into the shop. We did just finish going to the thrift store. I mean, I do that because I really only stop by one, but I went to a couple uh, garage sales because we're looking for a mini fridge just because I know if I'm going to be here, I'm going to get thirsty and I want some drinks and maybe I need some food. So that's something you always got to think about. Uh, but if you guys haven't seen it, me and Armando, um, one of the homies, we built these two desks. So this is going to be like the workstation where, you know, we could be doing like inventory logging and all that stuff. And then over here, we got our printer and the label maker. So over here is going to be more like our shipping area. So we put all the shoe boxes, well, not shoe boxes, but cardboard boxes here. Um, I brought more, you know, stuffing and all that stuff. And then we have our inventory rack. This is all like stuff I was bringing from home, clothing racks. I mean, that's not always going to be clothing. Hopefully it'll be shoes and clothing will kind of have its own section, but like, yeah, man. I mean, security cameras right there. Just have to turn it on. We got shelving all the way here. So brought the camera box. So we, we definitely have, you know, a lot of good potential stuff. Even if this, the store doesn't open, like I really like this space, even for just like a online only type of building, like warehouse. I mean, It'd be really expensive so obviously it, the goal is to open up in store but for a back room like this is super nice super nice so all right so we do have a couple pairs uh first pair is a dead stock pair of jordan one light smoke gray mids these are a size 10 and a half and they are dead stock so these sold on ebay for 315 shipped so i'll get about three to 310 out of those and then I sold these for the low. I, I had these up for like 160 and then I dropped the price to like 125 and then they sold instantly. I think I bought these for like, like pretty cheap, under $100 for sure. I think I was close to like 60 bucks in them or something like that. So I'm still making about, uh, you know, 60 bucks off of them. So that's a good flip. And then the last thing I sold was a pair of Yeezy taillights. Honestly, I dig this colorway. Uh, they're a size nine. They're lightly used, pretty good condition. I mean, the lettering's a little off on the inside, but that happens after like one or two wears anyways. But I sold these on off of Instagram. Somebody bought them for, I think, 275 shipped. So I should be getting about 270 out of them. And I bought them for a little under 230. So I'm making a little like $40 45 dollar come up right there so that's not bad and plus 275 for those is a good price they go for like three and up like all day so but also thank you for everyone who watches and is still buying stuff because i haven't updated like ebay at all like i've maybe uploaded one shoe but it's just been like a a halt for like a week 
two weeks almost. And to see that pairs have still looked like consistently been selling is one, it's a good sign that I'm buying the right products, right? Like if it's, if things are selling, that's always good for me because it's also helping like put money back. That's kind of been, cause all the shoes that are up, that means they've been sitting for longer than two weeks. It could be months, two months, three months, whatever. But if it's selling now, like that's good because I need to clear that old inventory so I can make space for new inventory, have it ready for the shop, get rid of some of the stuff. And yeah, so like I said, thank you guys for shopping with me, doing all that stuff. Make sure to look at the eBay and help me clear out some space. I'm trying to give out some good deals. So just let me know. All right, guys, another uh, thrift tip. Uh, so if you guys see these ASICs, oh, they're low-key taxing on them, 15 bucks though. But these are ASICs Gel Quantum 360s. So you see the gel right there. goes all the way around. That's why it's called a 360. But um, yeah, if you can clean shoes, this is a good shoe to cop. Because these sell for like anywhere between like 30 to like 80 bucks. Because it retails like $200 on these. So don't miss out on ASIC uh, gel shoes. Because those can make you money. What sport do you play? Football. Oh, okay, cool. A little 7 on 7 passing loop. Oh, okay. So, I live in Riverside, but it's here like in the guys. Yeah, they have a bunch of like huge parts over here, so it makes sense. These are pretty clean. Send, send the boy 220. There you go. All right, y'all. So we are back in the office. You guys just saw me pick up these two pairs. So I picked up a pair of these Jordan 3 infrareds. Or not infrareds. Is it? Yeah, these are the infrareds. Uh, the only flaw is like yellowing right here on the toe cap, but we can totally get that out. And then these are pretty clean. Like, look, the star count. Now, this isn't like the most popular Jordan 3, uh, but it is, it is like clean and simple. So it still sells. I think, I forgot how much I can get out of this. I need to do my, my research once again. But, um, you know, after cleaning this up, it'll be good. I'd cop these for a hundred bucks, which to me is a steal for how clean they are. So shout out to the homie for hooking it up. And then he also um, hooked it up with this pair of the alternate motorsports, which are also very, very clean. Like all that star count, very clean. Uh, it's just a harder shoe for me to move. And so like, honestly, like he was asking for about like 170 and I countered back 120, which I mean, I think is a low ball in my opinion, but uh, I just, I feel like these are just harder to move, so I'd probably price them for like 160, 170. And then we also got a pair of brand new. Oh, let's see. Dang, for the big footer, size 13, purple metallic Jordan 4 DS. Sent over by the homies, uh, Two Kicks. So shout out to Two Kicks for this pair. Uh, got them for. I paid two fifty for them. They're about three ten uh, DS on StockX right now, so <clears throat> sixty dollar profit right here. Perfect for the store. So we're gonna go ahead, log these into the inventory, get these, uh, get this one relaced a little bit, get that one unyellowed, and then we're good to go. You gotta drill bigger holes because they're not reaching the studs that are far back there. So now we have to install drywall anchors so that way the post can withhold a lot more weight. All right, y'all. So we got one old big bag right here. And so I just want to talk about a few of these pieces. So first piece out is I found this vintage Marlboro uh, jacket. Just a plain old red with just a patch. It needs, it needs a wash, but we did get that. And then we also got this cool uh, Mighty Ducks jersey right here. 
So it is a, I, it should be a vintage one because this is the old Disney logo. So that's kind of cool. So I got this and the Marlboro jacket at a garage sale. I paid $11 total. And I think the jersey alone goes for about like anywhere between like 60 to 100 bucks that I've been seeing. So I also found this at a thrift store, which is going to be for my wife, but it's a brand new Pendleton jacket. So there is the tags. We bought it at Goodwill and they were taxing 20 bucks for the jacket. But I mean, honestly, this jacket probably retails for a really high price. But the very last thing I want to talk to you guys about, which is honestly really, really crazy. Um, so just to be honest, like this is like story time and truth, truthful, honest, emotional time, I guess. But uh, to be honest, like doing the shop is super, super scary. Like it's, it's something that I'm putting, like now I have to be in the shop and do all the stuff. And, you know, as you keep going, you start realizing that there's more and more things that you need to apply for and pay for and do. And, you know, it's, it's crazy the journey that it's been on. And I'm constantly questioning myself, like, all right, was, was getting the store the right idea? Was getting the store like a real thing? And, you know, those thoughts just come into your mind where you're just like, dude, like, this is real. Like you got to, like you made this life decision and it's a big one because now you're going to be spending every single day at the shop pretty much and spending most of your hours here. Like this is your life now. And it just made me think like, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? Or I don't know, stuff like that. But stuff like this is what really reminds me. And you can call it fate. I mean, for, for me, I feel like this is like just God speaking to me. And, and you know, this is just like, if you guys don't know, like I'm Christian, I'm not afraid to be a Christian, uh, but I just, but I'm also not trying to force religion or Christianity down anyone's throat. Like this is just, you know, I'm recording this because this is my story. This is what I'm seeing. And I want to take you guys along with the journey. And part of that means me just talking about, you know, life and, and stuff like that. So for me personally, I feel like this is God kind of like showing me and giving me a sign, just being like, Hey, like you're on the right path. You're on the right journey. Let me just give you a little bit of like nostalgia and comfort just to know that, hey, everything is going on. So pretty much with that being said, I found this pair of shoes at Goodwill. So as you guys see right here, this is a pair of Jordan 13 Flint's. And when I saw them, I was like, whoa, okay, Flint's cool. And then I looked closer and I was like, yo, no way. Like, is this pair from 2005? Uh, and I was like, okay, cool. So you look at the tag on the back and you see that there's like the production dates, uh, say December, they were made December 3rd, you know, 2004, but they really came out 2005. And it's also a grade school pair, which is just, it's just crazy, man. Like, so if, if you guys don't know, like this is like my, the oldest memory I have about sneakers or me being a sneaker head or liking shoes is I, back in 2005, I was what, like, I was like 12 years old, right? I don't know what my shoe size was when I'm 12. I need, I should look at the average shoe size of a 12 year old, but um, I was 12 years old when these shoes came out. And I remember my mom took me to the mall because at the time I was playing basketball. I was, you know, I played basketball my whole life. And I just remember walking into like a Foot Locker or some shoe store and I just see these bad boys just sitting there. And I was like, yo, these are so sick. Like. I don't know what it was about them. I don't know if it was like the blue panel because it was like reflective or if it just looked cool with this little like logo back there because back then like they were all about like the holographic logos and stuff like that. Like I just remember that vividly. And I just remember I was so sad because I have a, a pair of 2001 Royals that belonged to my brother that, you know, that was like one of his first pairs of Jordans that he has and I have those now as like a nostalgia factor. And then my sister, I found an old pair of like the varsity red sixes, like the pair that came out in like 2000. And so we have those in her size that are just kind of chilling. And I was always like, man, I wish I had my first sneaker and I wish I could like, you know, just have it to remember the good times and just like almost the nostalgia factor for it too. And it's just so crazy. Cause I'm guessing like, these are a size like six Y. I know these probably aren't the same shoes that I had, but you know, six, 6 Y, I'm guessing could fit a 12 year old maybe. And it's just so crazy that these were here and 
Goodwill overpriced these at $25. Like it's ridiculous, $25 for shoes that are probably gonna fall apart. But, you know, just just these kind of small things that like, I mean, to me, it's not small. It's like, honestly, it's like the randomest thing. I wasn't even planning on going to Goodwill and I just see these and it's like, you know, in the midst of all of my questioning and all of the things that I'm worried about, like these things pop up and and to me, like I said, I feel like this is God just saying like, hey, don't worry, you're on the right path. Like I got you, I'm with you. Like, you know, so, you know, like sometimes you're just like, just give me a sign, like I need a sign or something like that. And I feel like for me, like this is that sign of just being like, hey, don't worry, you're good to go. Like I'm with you through this. And so, you know, this just gives me more confidence. And so I feel like I'm gonna keep these, not to restore and sell them, but I think I'm gonna like hang them like this and they're all vintage and it'll kind of be like a vintage vibe to it. Uh, and just kind of have them hanging around the shop just as a reminder that, you know, God is with me through the shop and that he's going to, um, you know, provide for me. And just like he always has through sneakers. So thank you guys for hearing my story uh, and a fun little fact about me about that being my first shoe and all that stuff. But yeah, it's, just, it's, it's crazy out here, like trying to, you know, put all your eggs in one basket. So I appreciate you guys for watching and doing all this stuff. Uh, if there's anything else to film, we'll cut to it. If not, uh, I just want to say thank you for watching the journey. And uh, if you guys have questions and different things about opening up a shop and whatnot, like go ahead, comment them down below. But I just want to say thank you because if it's not, if it wasn't for you guys, honestly, I think my sales wouldn't be that great. I know some of you guys shop and watch and do all that stuff. So just I want to say thank you and that I appreciate every single one of you. And we'll catch you guys on the next episode. Peace. Thanks.